Hi everyone, welcome back to Alice and the Giant Bookshelf. In today's video, I'm going to be showing you my massive haul from the library. Hi everyone, welcome back to my channel or welcome if you are new. My name's Alice and I have way too many books. In spite of those way too many books, I have been hauling a lot of books from the library lately and if you've been here for a little while you will know that that is because of the Women's Prize. By the Women's Prize I mean both the non-fiction long list which is in its inaugural year and the fiction long list both of which have now been announced and both of which I have decided I can only read the books if they are available in my library or available on audiobook. But today's video is kind of going to be a cross between my Women's Prize reading plans and update of how I am getting on with that and a library haul with also a tiny little bit of a book haul because at the end of my wrap up from February I said that I had hauled um, I think probably two more graphic novels that I haven't shown yet and also since then I've been on a booktuber meetup in London where we went book shopping so I do have one book to show you from that. So I'm going to start off with the three books that I have hauled for real, <laughs> for keeps and then I'm going to go into the library book haul and through that I'm going to be talking a bit about the Women's Prize for fiction and for non-fiction. Let's kick off with some of the books. So the first book that I have to show you that is actually hauled into my TBR and this was hauled in February is the book for a read-along that I'm starting today with the Tandem Collective and this is a global read-along I believe of a graphic novel. Very very exciting to participate in this because there are content creators from all around the world joining in with reading this graphic novel and that graphic novel which has kindly been sent to me by Tandem is Work-Life Balance Malevolent Managers and Folkloric Freelancers by Benjamin Chi and Wayne Ree. This looks very different from any graphic novel I've ever read before but I'm very very excited to get started today. Um, it does have a mixture of sort of text pages and completely graphic novel comic pages so I'm looking forward to getting into this. I will be mostly participating in this read-along over on Instagram so if you haven't checked my Instagram out it is linked down below in the description. I was really interested in the sort of idea of this combining of work-life balance with like Asian mythology which I know nothing about so really excited to get into this. Thank you very much to Tandem for sending me this lovely copy. The second one was the book that I hauled with my mum. My mum and I are doing a sort of book subscription this year where every month we're going to go to a bookshop together and buy each other a book. I won't talk about this one too much because I do still really really want to do a video with me and my mum. So February's book we went to Seven Oaks Bookshop and I picked a Guest in the House by Emily Carroll. I've had my eye on this graphic novel for a while. I've never read Emily Carroll before but they, I've heard some really good things about this. I think that this is a horror, definitely looks a bit scary and it says in the front, Abby is settling into married life, making coffee, cooking for her husband David and her stepdaughter Crystal, spending evenings curled up together in front of the TV. For a quiet woman without many friends, she's proud of the life that she has built and desperately wants to believe they will all be happy. But what really happened to Crystal's mother, the artist who no one speaks of? What secrets does their strange house by the water harbour? And what of Abby's old dreams and fears of Lady Grey, the knight and the dragon? In her chilling return, a story of grief, ghosts and the struggle to be true to oneself, Emily Carroll casts another unforgettable spell. So I'm really, really looking forward to reading this one. I may even get to this this month and I really like the style of this one. It's, I think this is almost entirely 
graphic novel but there are some pages with a little bit more text and there are some splashes of colour in this one as well. Very much looking forward to that graphic novel too and I've just noticed how awesome the naked hardback is under the um, black jacket so very very cool. Very happy to have that. Thanks to my mum for buying me that one in Seven Oaks Bookshop. And the final book that I've hauled onto my giant TBR, this one I actually hauled in March and I hauled it at the booktuber meetup that I went to in London. Hopefully I'm putting a few pictures up on the screen but as always with these things I was far too carried away chatting to people and looking at bookshops to take lots of photos thanks to my friends who have allowed me to use these photos. It was so lovely to see all of the booktubers again in person and meet some new booktubers who I'd not met before in real life and I miraculously came away with only one book from that meetup and that was a book I've been after for ages which was A Closed and Common Orbit by Becky Chambers. This is I believe the second book in the Wayfarers series although I've been told you can read these in any order I have heard really really good things about this one which was the second one to be released and I don't think I really want to know too much about this one I just want to enjoy it and I actually bought this one from the Common Press which was a bookshop I'd never been to before. So really, really pleased to haul this one and even more pleased that I didn't get too carried away and buy loads of books. You may think that the TBR stands a chance of going down this month since I've only added one book to it so far, but next to me I have two massive piles of library books, most of them to do with the Women's Prize, some of them not. There's really two parts to this library part of the haul. One is books that I've had for a while that are to do with the Women's Prize that I will be getting to either imminently or I have started reading and there's books that I got from the library yesterday when my first batch of reserves from the Women's Prize for Fiction long list arrived. I haven't really updated on my Women's Prize reading on the channel. I had a bit of a pause completely on Women's Prize stuff because everything I've got is obviously from the library and I went on holiday and I didn't want to take any library books with me. But when the Women's Prize long list for non-fiction first came out I actually had already got two of the books out of the library and it was just because I had a really strong feeling that both of these books would be listed and they were, which has never happened to me before. So the first one was Doppelganger. I am about two thirds of the way through this, if I'm being optimistic, just over halfway if I'm being pessimistic. Initially, I was really, really enjoying this book. I then found I had to engage my brain quite a lot for this. And I think that that's a me problem rather than a this book problem, because it's just about a lot of unfamiliar topics to me. I'm really interested in the kind of conspiracy theory side of it. I'm especially interested in the talk of doubles and doppelgangers, especially in literature. What I'm not as interested in is the US politics side of this one. I am enjoying Naomi Klein's writing, but I do find it is not necessarily entirely about topics that I find interesting or easy to read about. So I did put this one on pause for a little while, and that was mainly because I needed to return another book to the library, so I had to prioritise that one. I have now finished that book, so I probably will go back to this, at least to give the last third of it a try. There is a chance I might put this down but on the other hand the part of me that doesn't DNF feels like I've come too far with it now to let it go. So we will see. I think this is a non-fiction that a lot of people will really really enjoy reading. Secondly I started Wifedom by Anna Funder. The minute I started this one in contrast to Doppelganger I was hugely drawn in by this. This is sort of a biography of George Orwell's wife Eileen and the author also uses fictional elements but very very well researched fictional elements I would say and I'm going to be recording a review of this one probably next probably straight after this video so I won't go into it very much except to say that I have finished this one this morning. I did also have out of the library from this next batch of books a Flat Place by Noreen Masood, but because I went away on holiday and lots of other people had reserved it, I have had to return that. I have placed another reserve on it to see 
if I get that one in time for reading it within the prize window. I think I'm still interested in it even if I don't get to it in the prize window. But the other two books that I picked up in the same batch which is a couple of weeks ago was this one, Thunderclap, a memoir of art and life and sudden death by Laura Cumming. I'm hearing a lot of really positive things about this one and I know it was one on the non-fiction list that a lot of people were immediately drawn to and I think this did recently come up in another prize and potentially won that prize but there's been so many prize announcements in March that I'm not altogether sure what it has won and this one I'm really looking forward to reading either after Doppelganger or before this will be the next non-fiction one that I go to so really really looking forward to getting to that one and the other one I picked up in the same batch was Eve a How the Female Body Drove 200 Million Years of Human Evolution by Kat Bohannon and this one I did predict would be on the long list and it was but this is possibly on a topic that I think will be too tricky for me to get my head round. So it will very much depend on the writing style as to whether I decide to read this one in its entirety. It does have some pictures and some diagrams and I am interested to find out more about the female body. Equally I'm very nervous about this one because I'm not really very scientifically brained. Not, not a phrase. I'm not very scientifically minded so this one might be difficult for me and it's quite large. We'll see how we get on with um, due dates and things like that, I think. The next one that I picked up was the first one from the fiction list that I was able to get from the library and that was Western Lane by Chetna Maru. This was on the shelf in my library so I knew I would be able to get hold of this one straight away and I have actually started this one. I read a couple of pages the other day but I started it in earnest today and I'm nearly halfway through this. It's a very short book. It's listed for the Booker Prize last year. My impressions of it overall so far is that it's a very quiet book and for some reason, although I'm usually an all action kind of girl, I do find that there's a time and a place for a quiet book and I said that in my review of Tom Lake as well. But weirdly, even though I've just finished Tom Lake, I'm still in the mood for a quiet book. So. I'm making the most of that and I'm quite enjoying this tale of Gopi and her sisters who are sort of drawn into playing squash and learning to play squash after the death of their mother. I will review any of these as I finish them hopefully. Really quite enjoying Western Lane so far even though not an awful lot is happening in it. So we're finally on to the pile that I collected from the library yesterday. I had six reserves available. One is connected to the Women's Prize, one is completely unrelated and I've been waiting for it for a long time and the other four are the first reserves to come in from the fiction long list. I've actually ordered this pile vaguely in order from least interested in to most interested in and unsurprisingly the one that I'm most interested in is actually the one that isn't women's prize related. <laughs> Let's talk very briefly about my changing thoughts about the women's prize for fiction long list this year. So we have had reaction shows over on the plod along in case you've missed it. The plod along is the read along that I host with Charlie Brook Reads and Gemma from Gemma Books. Basically it's just a way of us all chatting online about the Women's Prize and the books that it brings us. So we did have a reaction show to the long list for both of these prizes. I was very caught up in the excitement of the Women's Prize for Fiction long list because I just find <laughs> The announcement so exciting. I always know that there's going to be surprises, I always know that I'm not going to have heard of a lot of the books and that's really exciting. Like I think that the anticipation of a thing is often more exciting than the reality. Initially going into the long list I was very excited, I'd watched probably more prediction videos than ever and watching the list I was extremely both confused and excited because nearly none of our predictions were right. I correctly predicted Soldier Sailor by Claire Kilroy and The Wren the Wren by Anne Enright but other than that I had not really 
got any right. My feelings on the day was that I was quite excited to see such a range of different books and different genres and as the list kind of sunk in with me I felt like I became less excited. Although I did immediately order a lot of these books from the library I have found myself not as interested in this long list as I have been certainly for last year's long list but we will see I'm still going to explore it I'm not set like I was last year on reading the entire long list there are some books on it that I don't think really interest me at all and I might never get to and I definitely think that I've begun to mentally sort the books into definitely want to read will probably read especially if it comes up on the shortlist and not really interested in reading we start with one I'm not really that interested in reading which is Restless Dolly Maunder by Kate Grenville. Now I'm trying not to prejudge this book because Kate Grenville is one of the authors with some previous with the prize. She actually won the Women's Prize quite a while back. I've never read a book from Kate Grenville but I had heard of her and this one is going to be about Dolly Maunder who's growing up in a poor farming family in rural New South Wales in Australia. So I'm not too sure about this, um, it says Dolly Maunder was born at the end of the 19th century, it's kind of a time that I do enjoy reading about and I've never read something set in Australia in that time frame so that could be interesting. The premise of this just doesn't really grab me but it is a very short book, I am going to give it a go and we will see if it ends up on this pile higher than it started on the pile of interest levels. The next one on my pile is Hangman by Maya Binyam. I think I might actually get to this one next although I'm not sure. I've heard mixed things about this I think although not a lot of things so far and it describes itself in here as a man's tragicomic journey through homecoming and loss and he's returning home in this book to sub-Saharan Africa after 26 years living in exile in America. I am interested to read that. I think stories of homecoming are always interesting. Again it's very short and I've heard that this one's quite strange and quite funny so we will see if it lives up to any of those things. It's one I'm quite curious to get to. And the next one on my pile is not actually on the long list so we were all a bit surprised <laughs> me included when there was a sci-fi book on the list and that was by Karen Lord and it's called The Blue Beautiful World. I'm still waiting for my hold on this one to come in in the library and I think it's kind of climate change driven sci-fi which I am very interested in so I almost feel like one of the only people who is getting really excited about reading this book but I did also hear that Karen Lord, who is an author from Barbados I believe, has written two other books that are set in this same sci-fi world and I also heard a rumour that reading Blue Beautiful World would make a lot more sense if you had already read the other two. Now <laughs> this kind of gets my back up because I don't like the idea of sequels being on prize lists. I always think that in order to win a prize it should be a standalone book that can stand on its own two feet without any further information about it, ideally. This isn't actually a book in a series, I'm told, so yeah, remains to be seen about it. But what has come into the library in the meantime is the first book from that world which is called The Best of All Possible Worlds. So depending on how soon The Blue Beautiful World comes in, I might give this one a try first. I think the second one is on the shelf in my library so I could give all of these a go in theory but time permitting really. Two books remaining for the Women's Prize and the first one of those is Eight Lives of a Century Old Trickster. When the list was first announced this was definitely one that I felt like I was very interested in. I believe it's partially set in a retirement home and is about a character telling lots of different life stories to somebody and then I think disbelieving this elderly woman <laughs> that she could possibly have had all of those lives going on. That's the basic premise that I get the idea of. I'm just noticing I can't actually see the author's name on it. But the author's name is like embossed in the bottom here. 
but I can't really see it so I think that that's bad design you can't see it on the spine either because it's embossed but it's by Marini Lee yeah I'm really quite interested to try this one it might be the first one I go to I'm just intrigued I have heard that it's really really brutal so <laughs> always interesting and the last women's prize one probably the one i'm most interested in at the moment is the ren the ren by anne enright i predicted this to be on the list and i predicted it because of anne enright maths and anne enright has been listed for the women's prize pretty consistently every four years so i think she's already been nominated four times and has never won the prize so I do wonder if this might be her year and this might be the book that does it for her. I have however heard Anne Enright fans saying that this isn't necessarily their favourite of hers. Actress I know is a popular one and The Gathering both of which were listed for the prize. Anne Enright has won the book prize. I've never tried her but my mum really likes Anne Enright. I don't think she liked this one as much as some of Anne Enright's others either. I think it'll be interesting to read this. I don't really want to read it back to back with Tom Lake so I'm giving it a bit of space and that's mainly also due to my mum because I think she had both of those out from the library at the same time and said that this one really didn't stand up to Tom Lake so I'm going to give it a little bit of time before I get to this one. Probably not too much time though because I expect it will have more reserves on it at the library and it will need to go back. The final book that I picked up yesterday from the library I have been waiting for since its release date which I believe was in January and it's absolutely brand new. I'm the first one to borrow it out and it's Everyone on This Train is a Suspect by Benjamin Stevenson. I do have a review of the first book featuring this character which is called Everyone in My Family Has Killed Someone. I really loved how that played with the rules of classic crime books. It was just a really fun book. If you have read that book or you want to hear a spoiler-free review, I will link that down below for you. I can't wait to get to this sequel, which like the title just evokes Murder on the Orient Express for me because I'm fairly sure that everyone on this train will be a suspect and uh, the blurb on this one is nice and brief very punchy i think i might have to get to this book very very soon it says six writers five detectives four days three weapons two murders one train how can you find a killer when all the suspects know how to get away with murder i mean that is the perfect blurb to me and just tells me what is going to happen in this book without telling me anything. Absolutely excited for this one, delighted to finally have it in my hands. Can you tell I'm a lot more enthusiastic about this one than about the Women's Prize for Fiction long list? Which is very unfortunate because I do have a lot of books to read from that. I will probably review this one when I've read it as well so watch this space for that. There is one more book to talk about very briefly and that's just because my mum just got this in from the library, read it immediately and said did I want to borrow it. Whether I read this immediately will very much depend on how many of these I can get through, how my TBR is looking and all of that sort of thing but my mum has lent me Has Anyone Seen Charlotte Salter by Nikki French if you've been here a while you know I love Nikki French. I've met Nikki French and they are a brilliant husband and wife writing team who I've enjoyed the vast majority of their books. I did think that their recent one required quite a lot of suspension of disbelief, The Favour it was called, so I'm really hoping that they've come back from that level of suspension of disbelief and we get like another really good psychological thriller. I don't know what this one is actually about apart from Charlotte Salter but I think it's got two timelines one in the 90s and one now and that's all I'm really going to find out before I read it. If I don't get to this immediately and it has to go back to the library I will keep looking out for it. Now seems to be a very busy time for reading. So that was my massive library haul. I do feel a bit like I'm drowning in library books. That's on top of the giant TBR situation. I am currently midway through a book from my giant TBR which is The Stone Sky by N.K. Jemisin. Cannot wait to finish that one as well. I'm starting work-life balance today for the read-along so 
that will be a couple of books off the TBR at least. And other than that, it looks like I'm going to be getting stuck into a lot of library books. Please do let me know in the comments which of these lovely library books do you think I should prioritise? If you have a different opinion to me on the Women's Prize books and where I should start, let me know. I'd love to hear your opinions. I may even choose based on them. I definitely am feeling still more enthusiastic about the non-fiction long list than I am about the fiction long list, but hopefully some of these books will begin to change my mind. Very questionable as to whether I will finish another non-fiction before the announcement of the shortlist next week. Seems to have gone so quickly. For a list of 16 non-fiction books, I really do think there ought to be a little bit longer between long list and short list. I would have liked that. I suppose that from next week we will know what's on the short list, so maybe I will prioritise the six books that are on that and there should be plenty of time to get some reading done of them before the winner is announced in June. If you are following along with our Women's Prize plod along or you would like to, our next show is going to be next Wednesday night the 27th of March and it is the reaction to the shortlist for the non-fiction books. So please do join us for that, 8pm GMT. That will be here on my channel. As I've said, please do comment down below and let me know all of your Women's Prize thoughts. If you've enjoyed this video today, please do give it a like and please do consider subscribing if you haven't already. I will hope very much to see you all again soon for another video all about books here on Alice and the Giant Bookshelf. Thanks for watching today and bye for now.